The Fannie Wade cover-up is now confirmed by two additional witnesses. We're waiting for Judge McAfee to issue a ruling on this, but new motions are skidding in. The question is, is he going to incorporate those into his rulings? Evidence is closed. We had summation arguments and new stuff keeps popping off, including these two submissions from co-defendants in the RICO prosecution, David Schaefer and Kathy Latham. We've got a Cobb County prosecutor who's now speaking up and a law professor who says that Terry Terrence Bradley was not honest in his testimony. So it seems like the floodgates are opening. Pandora's box is now cracked and Fannie and Wade are catching it from other people who are coming out of the woodwork. Scott McAfee's up for re-election. We've got reaction saying that even Fannie and Wade could be charged for perjury or fraud. Maybe there's a RICO indictment that they should be brought under to go after all the people who were involved in this disgusting cover-up. And of course, Trump is out responding to the Fannie saga. But let's see who is now joining in on the fun who's got some of that inside information that is coming out against Fanny? Another witness brought to us courtesy of David James Schaefer. They've got proposed testimony that they'd like to introduce into the Fanny saga. Here's how it sounds. Out in the state of Georgia, Fulton County, Scott McAfee's courtroom, they say David Schaefer as a defendant respectfully submits to the court and to the parties that in the event that evidence were reopened, we know it's closed, but if it were reopened because there's a bunch of motions that are being filed, if we have a new motion to dismiss or anything else that you're considering, Judge, we want this to be included. Currently, we're trying to get rid of Wade and Fannie, and if the prosecution and evidence is opened up, they say that Mr. Schaefer, the defendant, would offer the testimony of this person. She is an attorney. Her name is Cindy Lee Yeager. She is the co-chief deputy district attorney from Cobb County, Georgia. Whoa! Man, she's a prosecutor. She is a colleague. She's one county over. She's like, yeah, I'll help. What do you need? Another prosecutor. On Friday, March 1st, Miss Yeager spoke via telephone with the undersigned counsel for Mr. Schaefer and Mr. Christopher Anilwitz, counsel for Robert Cheely. So two lawyers on the phone, they're talking with this prosecutor. Here's a summary of the proposed testimony, which was provided by Miss Yeager to counsel for Mr. Schaefer and Mr. Cheely. So three lawyers, two defense attorneys, and a prosecutor. Sounds like a sitcom. From in or around, here is what Miss Yeager is telling us. From in or around August of 2023, so just last year, through January of 2024, Miss Yeager had numerous in-person and other conversations with the attorney called Terrence Bradley, in which information related to Willis and Wade was discussed. Oof. Now, in the course of Bradley's and Miss Yeager's discussions, Bradley told Miss Yeager the following, saying, D.A. Willis and Mr. Wade, they met during a 2019 municipal court CLE conference. Oh no! So Bradley again confirms this and I guess he must be speculating to this person too. He's just spreading gossip around. They say Mr. Wade again is coming from Bradley and this is the CLE. This is the judicial conference. They were in the robes. They were feeling frisky. You know how lawyers get at these conferences, but they said their relationship started in 22 and they put that in an affidavit to the court. Mr. Wade began his romantic relationship with Fanny at around that time. Busted. Mr. Wade had to definitively begun a romantic relationship with Willis during the time that Willis was running for DA in 2019 to 2020. Hmm. All before their affidavit said that they had a relationship. Again, you know, Fannie and Wade, they're going to say, well, what is romantic relationship? We don't really think that started until 2022 when Fannie sat him down and said, I want to be your boyfriend. Can we change our Facebook status? And he's like, fine, I'll do it. But they were, were indicting each other, you know, in their robes and other things for a long time before that moment. Now, Mr. Bradley stayed that he had no personal knowledge of the relationship between Mr. Wade and D.A. Willis, and he included details regarding the use of Miss Robin Yurdy's apartment and other meetings prior to November 2021. So that's weird because Bradley's telling this to everybody except the court. He told this to Miss Yeager. He told this to Ashley Merchant and apparently many other people, as we'll find out. But the only time he can't remember any of this is in the courtroom. Isn't that curious? So Mr. Bradley stated that Mr. Wade personally prepared his own divorce complaint against his spouse. And I believe this too. These guys were just trading work, right? Wade didn't want to go hire someone else. I'll just draft one up. There's all forms anyways, whatever. I'll just download it. Can I just use your name? Obviously I can't file it on myself. Can you just file this for me? That's why there was no fee agreement, no contract, no billing records, nothing because Wade did it. Miss is Jocelyn Wade.
made, he says, just sign it. And he told Mr. Bradley to sign the divorce papers and to file them, just do it. Now, based on these statements, it is Miss Yeager's understanding that Mr. Bradley did not begin representing Mr. Wade until November of 2021. And remember that Bradley said that they formed a relationship back in, I think he said 2018, it was like at a barbecue. He came over, he's like, hey man, you know, burger's done, what's up? I'm thinking about divorcing my wife. Everything after that, like, is now fair game. It's all pro talk, not bro talk. But obviously, this person says no. Bradley said, no, I just filed it. Like, I just slapped my name on it and sent it in. So in or around September of 2023, Mr. Bradley was visiting Miss Yeager in her office when Mr. Bradley received a telephone call. Huh. So they're in the same room together. Bradley visiting Miss Yeager. Okay, so up until now, by the way, all of this is Bradley telling this to Yeager. And she hasn't had any personal observations yet, right? She's just, oh, that's weird. He's talking to her about it. So then in September 23, Yeager is there. Bradley's there. Bradley picks up the phone. Cell phone rings. Hello? Miss Yeager could hear that the caller was Big Fanny. Hard to miss. Probably screaming for her glasses and water and documents. I need it right now. Ah, ah, on the phone. Willis was calling Mr. Bradley in response to an article that was published about how much money Mr. Wade and his law partners had been paid in this case. Whoa. Miss Yeager heard, okay, this is her hearing this. This is her own observations now. She didn't hear this from Terrence Bradley. She heard this herself. Whoa. She heard Big Fanny tell Mr. Bradley, they are coming after us. You don't need to talk to them about anything about us. They are coming after us, says Fanny. Busted. And this is a prosecutor, right? Who presumably is going to come in and tell the truth. So government prosecutor hears Fanny telling Bradley, shut your mouth. You don't need to talk to them about anything about us. Shut your mouth. Because I'm giving my lover, my boyfriend, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Shut your mouth. And this is Jaeger's own eyeballs and ears that heard all of this. So it's not just gossip, right, anymore. Miss Jaeger watched Mr. Bradley's testimony. She sat there. I hope he tells the truth. We all hope he was going to tell the truth. Because obviously, if you double down on a lie, especially a lie like this one, you're going to get busted. Like, Fanny and Nathan should have just come clean at the beginning. That was our recommendation. If they had any honor and integrity, they would have done that and saved themselves a lot of pain. But they didn't. They thought they were too smart and that they were going to over, you know, come all of the truth, I guess. And they doubled down on the lie. They submitted an affidavit that clearly is fake and is a new crime called perjury. And then Bradley was given an opportunity to just come tell the truth, man. And he couldn't do it. So she watched him before the court and she became concerned as a result of the fact that what Mr. Bradley testified to on the witness stand was directly contrary to what Mr. Bradley told Miss Yeager in person. Of course, you know, where is everyone else? I, I would say, right? Everyone knows this. Now, therefore, in the event that the court reopens the hearing to receive additional evidence, as requested by the state and Trump, Mr. Schaefer requests that the defense be permitted to subpoena Miss Yeager and present Miss Yeager's testimony relating to the matters set forth herein. Yeah, and so they gave him a chance, right? They gave Bradley a chance. Don't be dishonest and she gave him the opportunity and then he didn't and so she's now speaking out. She's in a different county so she's not in Fulton County where Big Fanny resides and she has you know a little bit more freedom to come out and speak about this. And Fanny Willis overheard by another prosecutor telling another lawyer to shut his mouth because they're investigating the money and they're coming after us. That's the DA of Fulton signed by Craig Gillen, Holly Pearson. Excellent work and we're excited to see where that one goes. Now David Schaefer he is on the X platform and and I do believe he is crowdfunding for his defense in this case. And so if you're on X and if you want to go support someone who could use a little bit of monetary love from you, David Schaefer's fighting this and he has a need for some support. So he is on X and if you go to his X profile, you'll find him and he does have a place where you can donate. So certainly keep that in mind if you're interested in that. Now, the other witness, another one comes afoot. Fanny Willis is even in more trouble. You see, Kathy Latham files this notice as well. She's another co-defendant. We're talking about Fulton County, Big Fanny Willis. Witness number two, defendant Kathy Latham says, you know, in the event, Judge McAfee, that you happen to reopen evidence on these various motions, if you do that, Miss Latham, our client, we would offer the testimony of another attorney called Manny Aurora, who's a former adjunct professor at Georgia State School of Law, and he's board certified in criminal law. On Thursday, February 29th, Mr. Aurora spoke by phone, another phone call, with the undersigned counsel for Miss Latham. Now, 
following is a summary of the proposed testimony, which was provided by Mr. Aurora to the council for Ms. Latham. Mr. Aurora says, between September through October 2023, Mr. Aurora, the law professor, he had several conversations with Terrence Bradley regarding the relationship between Willis and Wade. So Bradley again, wow, suddenly it's not so speculative. Suddenly he's, he's telling everybody about it. Man, he's a major gossip, right? Now in the course of Mr. Bradley's and Mr. Aurora's discussion, Mr. Bradley told Aurora the following. One, Mr. Wade had definitely begun a romantic relationship with Miss Willis during the time that Willis was running for DA. That means 2019 to 2020. That is way before the 2022 affidavit, which means liars after the election and during Miss Willis's transition, not that kind. She had Mr. Wade supervise the transition, including hiring and firing candidates after the interviews. So she just says, I'll just have my boyfriend do all this stuff and then I'll just appoint him. Mr. Bradley stated that he had personal knowledge of the relationship between Wade and Willis, including details regarding the use of Miss Robin Yurdy's apartment, another statement there, such as Mr. Wade having a garage opener to the property. You know, it's a pain in the butt to have someone open the door for you and all that. Just give him a garage. Here's a remote. Come on in. Two new witnesses, my friends. And these are credible witnesses, right? One is a former prosecutor or current prosecutor, rather. The other is a law professor. And they both have statements that say Terrence Bradley lied to the court, told Ashley Merchant that, told Prosecutor Jaeger that, and told Mr. Law Professor Aurora that. And then when he was asked about this in court, oh, I can't remember a thing. So therefore, in the event that the court does reopen the hearing to receive additional evidence as requested by the state, they want it open. Trump wants it open. Miss Latham requests that the defense be permitted to subpoena Mr. Aurora and present that testimony herein. Another just bombshell signed by William Cromwell, defense attorney extraordinaire for Kathy Latham. So good stuff coming out. Now, there are questions, right, about whether evidence is going to be reopened, but the judge just read all of that, okay? He may not include it in his evidence, you say, sure, let's go hear from them or whatever. But he read that. So he now knows that there is another prosecutor who is now talking about this. There's another law professor who's talking about this. And the reason these law professors and these prosecutors are talking about it is because it's disgusting what Fannie and Wade have done. It really is shattering their entire reputation and the entire Fulton County. It's like a laughing stock. And these people are in this profession. And so you don't want, right, even pick your profession, whatever it is that you do, you don't want rotten people giving your bad profession a name. And that's exactly exactly what Fannie and Wade are doing. And so good prosecutors, good law professors are coming out to tell them, sorry, you have to be honest or else you got to go. And so as you can see, it feels like the floodgates are opening a little bit. It feels like there is another layer to this. Of course, we have the court of law, but we also have the court of public opinion. Does Fannie and Wade's misconduct, does it reach a level of disqualification? And if it does, does it go beyond that and justify a dismissal? Well, legally, we don't really know. It's a matter of first impression. In fact, Judge McAfee is going to have to set the standard on what this looks like, and he is up for re-election. So he just got his campaign website launched, and we had a lot of curiosity about how this might impact his decision. And when people go to the polls, what are they going to be thinking about? So Tamar Hallerman on X, she said, Fulton County Superior Court Judge Scott McAfee has officially qualified to be a candidate on this year's ballot. He's running for a full term on the bench after being appointed by Governor Kemp late in 2022. So you see here is the screenshot. Judge of the Superior Court. McAfee is now on the ballot and he is there in Fulton and his website is keepjudgemcafee.com and here's what it looks like. Judge Scott McAfee getting the job done for Fulton County. Well, we sure hope so there, Judge. We sure hope so. So, of course, he's running and we're waiting for his ruling and in my opinion, he's been very fair so far and we're hopeful that he recognizes what a disaster this is for the entire legal profession there in Georgia and for the entire concept of the law elsewhere and there are questions about what might happen next for Fannie. And this was an exchange with a former prosecutor who says it might be appropriate for them to start thinking about federal perjury and fraud charges. Let's listen to this clip. Bob, he wasn't qualified for. That should disqualify them, don't you think? Well, it really should, Brian. You know, it's really odd in this case that she thought it was going to be fine and that no one would notice that she was hiring her boyfriend. I think that's part of the reason that it seems like they were sneaking around at weird hours of the night, which is what that cell phone data is going to reveal. The initial 
initial question about disqualifying her, though, Brian, was all about the money that he was spending on her. Now, because of their actions in court, because of their testimony in hearings and Taryn Bradley's testimony and some other testimony, they're in much more trouble for possible perjury yes. and fraud on the court. It's amazing to think they're going to do something unprecedented, like have a state case in the timing. If they're out, well, what does it, it do? Well, it really hurts the case. It hurts the timing. What's going to happen, though, I think everything's going to get delayed. I doubt that Judge McAfee is going to rule today from the bench on all the issues that are outstanding around and he did, disqualification. Obviously. He's going to want to listen to the evidence. He's going to want to hear. Yeah, and he's going to issue a response. So yeah, fraud, perjury, I think those are all valid and relevant. And of course, Donald Trump has come out and he's now talking about this as we all await a ruling. And he was out on the campaign trail explaining that all of this litigation is really brought by the Democrats. This clip came over from our friend Benny Johnson on the X. And here is what Trump said on the trail. It says, look at Fawny. You know, Fawny is F-A-N-I. Fanny. She indicted me. She wanted to indict U.S. senators for doing nothing. Indicted me for doing nothing. And it was her and a boyfriend. And he got almost a million dollars. He had no experience, no nothing. Knew him a long time ago. Then she said something to the effect, I don't know much about the gentleman. They had 2,000 phone calls. I said, you know, I'm not sure I ever called the first lady 2,000 times. And I've been with her for a long time, I think. And they have thousands of text messages, right? But she's not sure whether or not she knows it. The whole thing is a con job. You look at what's going on in Manhattan where Hillary Clinton, think of it, Hillary Clinton's lawyer with a big law firm leaves the firm to go into the DA's office to prosecute me. Then he leaves the DA's office and he writes a book. Before anything was done, he's writing a book. I mean, how illegal is that? Or take deranged Jack Smith. He's a deranged person. Yeah, that's true. And look at his record. He's been overturned by the U.S. Supreme Court unanimously. These people, if they were set out to do a number on me to damage me so that Biden could beat me, because that's the only way he can beat anybody, because mm -hmm. he's damaged. I mean, he's really damaged goods. And you know what he should do? They're all his prosecutors. They work for him, like Fawny and her lover, went to Washington and spent at least two days that they know of, eight-hour days in the White House yeah, uh, Counsel's why? Office or the DOJ. So they were working on this a long time in conjunction with Joe Biden's White House. The DA's office has one of the top people from the Justice Department, that's Washington, in other words, Merritt Garland's people, put their top person in the DA's office to handle this case. And it's a nonsense case. You know, every legal opinion I've read said it's not even a crime. It's not a crime. It's not this. It's not that. It should never be brought. Yeah, it doesn't should matter. Have never been. None of these things should have been brought. That's true. But it's all being, all of these indictments are Biden indictments. And they're there to hurt an opponent. If I weren't running, none of this stuff would have ever happened. Or if I was doing badly, I would say it probably wouldn't happen. But all of this was done to inflict harm on his political opponent. And we've never had that in this country. It's something that's quite well known, but it's in other countries, years. not in this country. This yep. is a big example. And honestly, what he should do is take all of those prosecutors off the cases and fight a really fair fight. Not We're going to win anyway, that. one way or the other. We're going to win anyway. That's but true. they should fight it fair because it's so bad for the country. And people know what's happening. They see it. If they didn't see it, I'd be down at nothing. I'd be absolutely nothing. They get it. And they see weaponization. It's an attack on a political opponent. If people thought that Trump actually did something bad, he's exactly right. The polls would not be what they are. His support would not be there. They wouldn't have to sell it, right? When somebody commits an actual crime, they don't have to sell it to you. Oh, it's a really bad thing what this person did. No, you just know. It's like, okay, that person did something very, very bad. Everyone knows it. The fact that they have to try to program large portion of this country into thinking that it is a problem shows you how weak their claims are. And that's not just in Georgia. It's everywhere. Every one of these. So we do have a, another possibility here. So there is a hearing taking place March 6 on Wednesday. We're going to be covering this live. Thank you for subscribing and joining us as we cover this. will be an early one for us tomorrow. So we'll be here. Ashley Merchant is going to be testifying. She's going to be producing documents and sworn materials to the Georgia Senate. And this is going to be another interesting avenue because what if someone else removes Fannie? In other words, what if the Senate passes some legislation, they defund her, they remove her, she resigns, something like that happens, that might impact what Judge McAfee feels like he needs to do. He may not need to reach certain conclusions of law if they are now moot. You know what I mean? So he might have an escape hatch or a safety valve if the Georgia legislature does something. Maybe they try to remove Fannie or she gets, you know, removed another
other way, then the court wouldn't have to reach that and it wouldn't have to make any conclusions about the law that might impact the DA's office more broadly. So I'm trying to think about ways that someone could come in and save this case. Can they take this case away from the judge? Can the legislature just say, we're removing Fannie from this. She's gone because of our you know, investigation, whatever. And so we're going to see what this looks like tomorrow, my friends. So thank you for subscribing. Thank you for joining us. It's going to be Wednesday, March 6th, and it's going to be live. It's going to be a lot of fun. So come and join us for an early morning. And also don't forget to check out some of the links down in the description below. We've got a lot of good stuff down there, including our members only community at watching the watchers.locals.com where we do streams in the morning. We do streams on Saturday. We have an amazing group of friends over there. We'd love to have you watching the watchers.locals.com. Come and join us and also check out some of the other links where you can find all the PDFs at robertgovea.com. And we'll look forward to seeing you back here on the next one. Thank you.